everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about a great, underrated British band who, like Classics Nouveau in the 80s, became very popular in Poland. But, you know, they, they did have some semi-chart hits in the UK, and they are beloved by so many of their fans. I am talking about a band called Redbox. Now, Redbox are not the most prolific of bands, but I will tell you, each album is just a treat and definitely worth the wait. Uh, I usually like to start these episodes off and tell you how I got into the band, and that's just because I was flipping through the bins. It was 1986, and I saw an album called The Circle in the Square, and I thought, I'm going to check that out. So I took it home, and what I heard rivaled uh, I'm not saying it sounded like, but gave me the same feeling as like what Peter Gabriel was doing, uh, you know, with uh, with albums in the 80s. What Kate Bush was doing with her albums such as The Dreaming and Hounds of Love. Very, you know, rhythmic, very melodic, uh, drawing elements from different uh, styles of world music, you know, chanting and this and that. And... It just blew my mind. I just thought, wow, this band, you know, and, and each song had so many great hooks that I thought these guys are destined to have hits. Well, here in the U.S., hardly anybody knows about them. And I'm going to go through their catalog and I'm going to tell you about it because uh, they are absolutely fantastic. And at the end of this video, you're going to get a short video featuring two songs from each album, plus a fluke hit single that I'll also tell you about. Now, let's start with the first album. It is called The Circle and the Square wonderful stuff. Like I said, uh, uh, at this point, uh, the band was Simon Tolson Clark and Julian Close. Uh, so they were a duo. And there, of course, is their picture. There. This is the Cherry Pop version with uh, bonus tracks on it. And this, you know, it, it's, it's rhythmic. It's fun. It's upbeat. It's joyful. Has these great just instant hooks, uh, but it sounds kind of unlike anything else. I was comparing them earlier to Peter Gabriel, you know, so type era and uh, Kate Bush, uh, the dreaming and stuff, but it also sounds very different than that as well. You know, a lot of acoustic guitars, lots of keyboards, uh, lots of, you know, call and response vocals, really, really wonderful upbeat songs like For America, uh, The Circle on the Square, Lean on Me, Chinka Tinka Io. Uh, so many great songs. This is uh, Cherry Red, like I said, so it has bonus tracks. And there you go, the back again. Absolutely wonderful. Now, the band was not known to be prolific. So Julian Close had left the band, and Simon Tolson Clark continued as Redbox. Took another four years before he put out the album Motive. And this continued in the same vein. You know, it had all the same elements, but it was more... Uh, I guess maybe downbeat, not not sad or or uh, uh, dark or anything like that. But the songs were slower, more thoughtful, uh, deeper, but still had that red box sound. It just wasn't you know bibbity bobbity boo, you know jumping around the room having fun. It was a thinking man's record. This is of course the cherry pop version, and it has several bonus tracks. And this was a great album. Like I said, it's diff very different from The Circle on the Square. Now, in 1990, they also had a hit single, but it was kind of different. There was a song, uh, B-Side, I believe, called uh, Enjoy. And it was uh, remixed by Paul Oakenfold. And he uh, put the single out. I think he put it out under the band name Solid Gold Easy Annex. And uh, it actually became a dance floor hit. So it's interesting. They're putting out something that's slower, more thoughtful. And a B-side of theirs actually ended up being uh, a hit single in clubs. So, you know, but it, it did raise their profile. And that's really the most important thing. So this was absolutely wonderful. But guess what? It took another 20 years for the band to return with plenty. And let me tell you, I was not prepared for this was not prepared for how emotional this album was. I mean, I pushed play and I was just instantly thrust into this world of heartbreak and sadness. I mean, we all can relate to uh, different relationship struggles or different life struggles, but the songs on this are so beautiful and so emotional that I, I still get chills when I listen to this album. I mean, it took 20 years for it to come out. It's even mellower than Motive, but it's much more powerful than anything that they had put out before. Uh, 
it's absolutely incredible. Now, this is a, a two CD version. It's autographed by uh, Simon Tolson Clark on the back there. Now, this version here contains like a bonus uh, CD EP with non album material. Uh, so, I would obviously recommend you check that one out, but do what you can to get a hold of uh, this. If you want to bring yourself to near tears, such a wonderful emotional experience. I was not prepared for it. And it hit me at a time when, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I can't even go into it. This album is so awe-inspiring, uh, and I love it. But again, since they're not known to put out uh, material very quickly, they're not really a prolific band, it took another nine years for their next album. And that was Chase the Setting Sun. Now, this actually harkens back to the first album, you know, the really upbeat stuff. Now, it doesn't sound like the first album. It sounds like it because it's Simon writing these songs and singing the songs and having all these interesting things going on, you know, but it's not a carbon copy of the first album, but it's more upbeat like the first album. At least the first half of the album is. Uh, the second half is more eclectic, eccentric, uh, adding more ex experimental sides, but still just as wonderful, just as exciting and and fantastic and it, it, it's a wonderful return to form but every red box album was a wonderful return to form because that form was always changing and it continues to change i have no idea if we're ever going to get another red box album it might be when i'm super duper old but i will gladly rush out and buy it immediately they are such a worthwhile band you need to pay attention to red box if you love that 80s and 90s uh uh, you know, intelligent, artsy, world music infused pop. It's just going to blow your mind. In fact, what I have right now is a medley featuring two tracks from each album and a little segment at the end of that remix by Paul Oakenfold of that B side. It's actually just an instrumental track, but it's really catchy. So please enjoy this medley, and I'll see you on the other side.
Anyway, that's it. I thank you for your time. Uh, I hope that this inspires you to check out Redbox. Such a wonderful, worthwhile band. Uh, and and it, it's just more than a pop band. Uh, just uh, just you know, a lot of emotions at stake when you listen to their albums. Uh, and those emotions range from joy to sadness to heartbreak. Uh, and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful, wonderful time with a band called Redbox. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate you. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me, I'm Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie.